Welcome to another Yesterday's Airlines video. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking a closer look at the two recent releases by a new brand called Miniature Models. Now, Miniature Models are using here, as you can probably tell, the new Panda Models Boeing 737-400 for this pair of Thai Airways International um, releases. However, I've been told that um, Miniature Models are not a retailer store um, that are using Panda. They actually have pretensions to be a manufacturer in their own right. It'll be interesting to see if that pans out or not. Um, but for now, it gives a good opportunity to look at these two models and also give the Panda 737-400 a closer look because I haven't really up till now. And, you know, just looking at these models without actually getting in close, um, they look pretty good. So I'm pretty excited to be doing this review. Now, a quick shout out um, to Midwest Model Store, um, who um, are selling these models in the United States. So check out their website here. And now we'll get into the review. I've actually written a review for the uh, 2005 Colors version of this on the website, which will be published. So I won't review that one in detail in the video. Instead, I will focus on the older livery version. Now, both aircraft, as you can see from the boxes, represent the same um, unit here, HSTDH, which actually has been misprinted as HDTDH on the box, um, which is a minor error, but not in the universe since it's just a box. And that will be the model I focus on for this review. Now, before I get started, Obviously, check out my website, yesterdaysairlines.com, for a ton of material about 400 scale, the molds, the manufacturers, the releases, pretty much anything that you need to know. Also, check me out on Instagram, at Yester Airlines, and on Facebook, at Yester Airlines. I'm pretty prolific, so I get a lot of content out there in the market. Okay, cool. Now, in terms of the review, as always with my detailed reviews, I will be reviewing or splitting the review into three main sections. Firstly, I look at the mold for the model, which can get a maximum score of 10. Then I look at the livery and the colors, and that can get a score out of 10. And then I look at the printing and the quality control, and that can get a score out of 10 for a maximum score of 30 for one of these reviews. Okay, cool. Now that's explained, let's get on with it. Okay, now just before I look at the actual model itself, obviously we've got the box. I know some people are interested in what the box is like, and this box is actually is very attractive. Obviously there's the arrow with the HD, which they've appeared everywhere. Um, rather ironically, not on the aeroplane. Um, but the box itself is nice. You can see it's got this um, miniature models item number here, which is interesting. And overall it's attractive and nice, and it tells you a bit about the aircraft on the back. It tells you when it was delivered, it tells you its name, which was Lopbury and tells you a bit about the type. So, nice box with some interesting detail, shame about the print typo, but not the end of the universe. So that's the box. Now on to the aircraft itself, and if I bring in the box to put it on so we can get a closer view of the model, and I will be able to zoom in a bit and focus hopefully on the model nicely, there we go. Now the first thing to say about 737-400s in 400 scale is, there aren't that many of them. There have actually been less than 100 releases of the type, which is a shame because um, there are a lot of 737-400s that could still be made and I would like to see. Um, Panda's new mold here was announced way back in November 2019, but never actually got to production for the year uh, and then turned up late in 2020 with a couple of rather um, boring, in my opinion, um, cargo releases and an Indonesian Air Force example, which really didn't float my boat, especially when you've got an aeroplane which is so symptomatic of the 1990s. So these Thai ones are more interesting to me, but they're not quite as interesting as the Piedmont, sorry, Piedmont, <laughs> and the Boeing House Colors releases which were made, and I really hope that Panda get their shit together and actually start producing some more interesting and more regular 77 punches because they've only made eight or nine um, models using this mold so far. Now, I'll compare it to the Gemini version of the 77.0, which is a much older mold, but it's clear when you look at this that this is an exceptional looking model, an exceptional looking mold for the type. Um, there's very little that I can criticize about this model. 
Uh, one of the things that is obviously key with the 737 is this area around the nose, the shape of the nose, which is something which has been a real struggle for many manufacturers. And in fact, the Panda, um, the 737 400 gets this spot on, whereas if you look at the Phoenix version, um, it's awful and it looks like a kind of a duck nose on their 737, whereas the Panda one is, is very, very, very nice. I mean, if you look at the, um, the Gemini Jets mold, which as I said is much older mold, though it is still in use and has been updated, then its mold, uh, sorry, its nose, yeah, it's okay, but you see it just doesn't have the same kind of right contouring around the cockpit. It certainly is not living up to the capability that's being shown here by this new Panda mold, and that's not surprising because this is a new mold and the Gemini one is a lot older. So pretty much perfect at the nose. For me, it's got really nicely contoured um, lower fuselage and I like the way that the nose gear sits in here, though perhaps it's a little bit chunky at the back margin. It's got the good size nose gear and it's the right kind of height. And moving along the fuselage, pretty much there's very little to complain about. In fact, there's nothing really to complain about, I would say. The engines sit really nicely here on the pylons, the main gear. Tires might be slightly too large, but not really, I don't think. And they keep the engines nicely at the right level. And if you move the plane around and look at the front, you can see obviously you have that characteristic diagnostic flat bottom here to the engines, which look great. So it's looking lovely. And moving across the wings, there's a nice tight fit into the fuselage most of the time. Although it does seem here there's a bit of quality lacking slightly there. We'll perhaps look at that when we take a closer look at that section of the review. And moving along, you can see also we've got aerials. In fact, we've got four aerials. We've got one down here, we've got one behind the wing, we've got one on the roof, and we've got this very, very small one here, um, just in front of the tail. Um, and they are actually really nicely sized and look good. Moving towards the rear of the aeroplane, and I think they've done a very nice job here as well. You can see that it's got a nicely squared off, but still slightly rounded tail cone. You've got the tail bumper in place, which is great. And the actual tail itself really has a very snug fit to the fuselage, which looks really good. So overall, I think that if you're looking at this mold, I can't really see anything which is really going to be docking at major points or perhaps any points. It's got really, really nicely designed areas to it. I think it's pretty much perfect. So a really nice 737-400. And if I look at the underneath of the model as well, there's no stand hole, which is interesting. Um, though I doubt many people put such a small model on stand anyway. But you can see that there's lovely um, indents here for where the tires go into the fuselage. And some nice detailing here at these intakes. So it's actually got a really good look and feel and structure it certainly is knocking out of the park this much older um gemini mold which which i've always not hated but it sits slightly tailed down and it just doesn't have quite the same quality now this is an older one without um aerials on it but otherwise the mold hasn't really changed it's nice but it's not anywhere near as nice as this which is a much better mold so for me, I think this is scoring a, a 10 out of 10 on the mold front. Section two of the review looks at the livery, and this is obviously a classic livery. It's another Landor Associates scheme. It was replaced in 2005 by a still attractive scheme, but perhaps not quite as an iconic one. And this aircraft wore this older version of the livery well into 2008 before it was repainted. It's a lovely scheme. It's it's one of those really classic schemes from Asia in the 80s and 90s, like the Singapore Airlines scheme. You know, I don't, I don't think anyone dislikes it. And I think that um, broadly, they've done a, a decent job of replicating it here, though it is not perfect. So if we look at the actual colors, there are three main colors on this classic um, livery. There's obviously gold, there's a magenta, which is kind of the pinky kind of color there. And then you've kind of got this burgundy, purpley kind of color, um, or maroon, I'm really bad with colors, but by the way, the dark color. And 
When I look at photos of this aircraft, then I am not entirely certain they've got all the colors correct. I think the gold and the magenta are fine, but I'm not entirely sure about the shade of the darker color. So this is the model on its side here. And here is a photograph of the real thing. So I think you can see that this is a little dark, the shade of the cheat line here, it's a little dark, um, not quite spot on. I also think that when it comes to the cheat line itself, um, that the magenta stripe that runs down the middle of it on this model is not quite thick enough. So I think that again, it's slightly too thin inside the wider cheat line there. So I think there are two issues there with the livery though. Neither of them are crippling ones, I would say. And there is quite a history of airlines getting this color wrong. In terms of the rest of the scheme here, I think they've done an excellent job. Um, obviously you've got the Thai flag at the top of the tail. You've got the orchid style um, tail logo, all perfectly placed. The cheat line itself, um, we'll talk about its overall position in the, the print section, but the thickness of the actual cheat line and the titles placement and the, the placement of the titles in comparison to the window line is all good. The orchid on the 77s always seems smaller at the front of the cheat line than on other types and that's accurate. It's got a really nice um, anti-glare mask on this model. As you can see it's really nicely shaped and the aircraft name Lop Bury is present as is the Star Alliance logo which has actually got some really, I don't know if I can zoom in on it, um, just about, it's actually got some really good detail on it, so detailed that you can see the, the different aspects of the triangles that make it up. So really nice. And then if you spin around to the other side of the aircraft, then you've got um, the name of the frame in um, what I presume is local Thai script there. Um, other elements of the scheme are also present. So you've got the registration on the top of the starboard wing, you've got the registration on the lower half of the port wing, you've obviously got the TDH also on the nose gear door. So overall they've done a good job here but I do think that the pink or magenta stripe in the middle of the cheat line is too small, uh, not thick enough and I'm not entirely certain about the colour of the darker cheat line. So I'm going to score this an 8 in terms of the livery. Okay, so moving on to the last section of the review, uh, which looks at the printing and the quality control. And as you've seen from the other sections, there are some issues here, I believe. So the printing on Panda models is generally spectacularly good. And as I've already pointed out, there's a lot of detail like the Starlance logo. You can see you've got these really daintily printed um, doors here for the internal air stairs. There's really nice detailing underneath the frame as well. You see lots of detail printing down here and on the engines and overall the printing is very, very crisp and good. But I do think that in common with some other Panda 737s that the cheat line is not necessarily in the right place. And I think that's because the window template for the, the base mold is slightly inaccurate. Now it's fine at the front here, it starts off fine but then I think it just gets a little bit, just around the wing, it gets, the angle is wrong and it's moving up. So you end up with the windows slightly too high up. The cheat line should be slightly beneath the um, horizontal stabilizer um, or slightly further beneath the horizontal stabilizer. So I do think that that is an issue with it. It's, it's not dramatic actually, and it does not really jump out at me, but it, nonetheless, I do think that they, should modify the window line printing on the base template and slightly level it out. Interestingly, you don't notice it at all on the um, on this version of the model, um, and I didn't notice it and it didn't pay any attention, but that's partly because it probably doesn't have a cheat line. So that's definitely an issue. Otherwise, the printing is great across, um, it's got nice dark inners uh, to the engines. Now, in terms of the quality, this is where I think this model is going to lose a couple of points too. Um, we've already noticed that there is not the most spectacular job here of attaching this port side wing which is firmly attached but is not right against the body you don't really notice it too much when you model but in close up it's there there's also a tire tab on the rear 
wheel here, as you can see, very small, but nonetheless there. So those things aren't great. I also can't say I'm spectacularly thrilled by the state of the rim around the nacelle here, which looks a little bit rough too. So I think that there's, um, you know, a few things adding up here. And overall, I think that I'm gonna knock a point off for the height of the windows. I'm gonna knock a point off for that wing join not being particularly good. And I'm gonna knock a, a half a point off each for the tire tab and that rim. So that'll knock three points off for a score of seven out of 10 in the print and quality control space. Okay, so the summary, what do I think of these miniature models slash panda models, tie 7741s? They're actually a really nice pair. And in my detailed review for the newer livery version, it actually scores better than the older livery version. It doesn't have the same quality issues. And I think they've done a better job with the scheme too. But overall, they're really nice models. I think um, that this is a killer mold and I really look forward to seeing it being used on something perhaps more fitting of my collection criteria, perhaps some um, American 737-400s or some UK charter ones. Would be nice if you're listening, Panda. <laughs> but overall, these are really nice models. Will miniature models produce their own mold and do their own thing? Who knows, or just continue to use Panda? I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting to find out, but for the time being, it's a good idea to use this Panda 7700 because it is an excellent, excellent mold. Now overall, this model on the left um, does suffer somewhat from some minor quality issues there. So its score does not necessarily um, replicate the highest of the highs. So I gave it 10 for the mold, I gave it eight for the livery, and it got seven for the printing and the quality control. So that's actually only a 25 out of 30, which is good, but not spectacularly good. So in this particular model, I'm sure some of them you know, don't have tabs, don't have the, the quality issues, it's not great. But overall, um, they're very nice models. And in fact, this one on the, the left got 29 because the, um, the mold and livery are so good on that version. So hope you've enjoyed the review. Um, I really like this pair of models. Once again, thank you for Midwest Model Store and check out the models there. They're both on sale in the States at Midwest Model Store. And I really hope you enjoy the video. So thanks for watching. See you later.